Morris Robinson, a truck driver from Craig Avon in County Amar, collected a container from the port in Essex on October 23rd of 2019. He was paid £25,000 in cash to pick up the container, a huge sum of money for a simple driving job. The reason the fee was so high was due to the container's contents. 39 Vietnamese migrant workers. He had been instructed to open the refrigerated trailer to give the migrants air shortly after collecting it from Perfleet docks. But upon opening the container, he was greeted by a horrific sight. A cloud of steam emerged from the trailer as he swung the door open, a scene that was caught on nearby CCTV. This image speaks volumes of the heat that was still inside the trailer. The Vietnamese immigrants inside the container were all dead. Morris Robinson waited 20 minutes before calling emergency services to report the deaths. Welcome back to Crime Chronicles. Today we look at the main players in one of the most harrowing human trafficking stories in recent UK history. Stay tuned to find out how the key figures are inextricably linked to a Europe-wide network and the scope of their criminality was discovered almost by accident. In court, truck driver Morris Robinson pleaded guilty to manslaughter and people smuggling charges and was sentenced to 13 years and four months in prison. The young truck driver was actually a very small part of an extremely large and profitable people smuggling operation that spanned most of Europe. This tragic event not only led to the conviction of 11 people in the UK and another 19 in Belgium, but also played a role in the downfall of a notorious figure who shipped tons of drugs from Europe to the UK and Ireland. On the surface, Irishman Thomas Mayer appeared to be an average, ordinary businessman. He's a husband and father of three, and for many years had owned and operated a successful trucking company. He resided in Warrington, a city in the northwest of England. His house was nice, but didn't give the impression of extreme wealth. The multiple high-end cars and SUVs on the driveway were the only outward expression of his money. Mayer operated a seemingly legitimate road haulage company, with trucks registered in Bulgaria in an effort to sidestep stringent UK regulations. Although his business was successful, he and his wife earned less than minimum wage on paper for tax purposes. But lurking beneath the surface was the reality that Thomas Mayer had been involved in serious drug trafficking throughout Europe for two decades. He had worked with a number of high-end underworld groups, including Colombian gangs and the Kinahan cartel. Once inside his unassuming suburban house, the level of his wealth would become clearer. His house featured a number of valuable art pieces, many luxury watches, gold ingots and large amounts of cash. In addition, Mayer spared no expense when it came to travel. He splashed the cash on lavish vacations, always travelling in business class or first class on trips to North America, Mexico and Dubai. While on these luxury holidays he would continue to spend large amounts of money on things like chartered helicopters. In one four year period, Mayer spent £70,000 with one UK holiday booking company. Not bad for someone who made less than minimum wage on paper. He also owned property in Spain, where he lived a life of luxury. To those who didn't know of his criminal dealings, Mayer appeared like a normal guy, but he was making a crazy amount of illegal money, and he loved to spend it. Mayer came onto the National Crime Agency radar when he was arrested in connection with the deaths of 39 Vietnamese migrants found dead in the back of the lorry in Perfleet. In a freak piece of luck for the authorities, the trailer unit involved had at one point been owned by Mayer and was still registered in his wife's name, even after it was sold. Mayer has not been charged in relation to that case, but he has been described by the NCA as the logistics man for a number of crime groups, moving drugs and profits across Europe. Once Mayer was on the NCA's radar, they started looking at his lifestyle. The expense of Corvette and Range Rover on his driveway, the frequent holidays, 
all of which didn't match the figures he provided to Inland Revenue. They knew something smelled fishy, so they started an intensive seven-month surveillance operation, during which NCA officers watched Mayer meet with criminal associates at hotels and in public spaces in the Northwest to organise the trafficking of cocaine from the Netherlands to the UK and Ireland. As well as drugs, Mayer also helped to facilitate the movement of large sums of cash, charging a commission for his involvement. Although Mayer worked closely with many underworld gangs, there is no evidence he was controlled by any one group. He was a free agent and his services were for sale for a fee. His lucrative operation was taken down through evidence obtained by the National Crime Agency as part of Operation Venetic, the UK law enforcement response to the takedown of the EncroChat network. During this lengthy investigation, Mayer seemed to become aware that his communications were being intercepted and switched to using EncroChat. The police suspected that he hid his phones outside his home each night when not in use. But despite increasing pressure from law enforcement, Mayer maintained confidence in the security of his EncroChat phone. Although he used coded language, he persisted in talking on the phone about matters involving drug trafficking. Little did he know the NCA was on the verge of gaining access to his communications. The investigation began in October of 2019, but the crucial breakthrough came when the NCA obtained material from the hack of the EncroChat network. The amount of messages from his accounts unveiled his orchestration of the collection and delivery of at least 21 kilograms of cocaine from locations in the Netherlands. Associates reported back to Mayer as the drugs were picked up, transported and arrived at their final destination in Ireland. One exchange, which took place at a garage in Leerop in the Netherlands, involved 11 kilograms of cocaine being passed between two vehicles. Two days later, the arrival of the drugs through Dunkirk to Dover and eventually to a destination near Dublin, was confirmed. Messages showed that Mayer had discussed splitting the profit with one of his group. In another job, Mayer made arrangements for 10 kilograms of cocaine to be collected from an area near Distrubin in the Netherlands and again delivered to the outskirts of Dublin. Mayer and his team used hidden compartments concealed in trucks to move substantial amounts of highly pure cocaine across Europe and cash into the hands of drug gangs. NCA officers arrested Mayer on the 13th of June 2020 at his home, after receiving intelligence that he planned to leave the country. His intercepted messages suggested that he thought he could leave the country without a passport by hiding in a truck. He planned to get travel documents in Spain and then go to a country without an extradition treaty. It seems that Thomas Mayer knew that being linked to the death of the 39 immigrants was bringing unnecessary heat down on him. He allegedly planned to have trucker Ronan Hughes stabbed or severely beaten in jail as he awaited extradition proceedings to the UK for his part in the manslaughter of 39 immigrant workers. Ronan Hughes was the person Mayer had sold the refrigerated container to, and Hughes had left it registered in Mayer's wife's name. This simple paperwork oversight would eventually lead to the downfall of the underworld's King of the Road. Thomas Mayer was eventually sentenced to 14 years and 8 months in jail for playing a key role in a highly professional operation, acting as a logistics man for some of Europe's most notorious organised crime gangs, shipping tons of drugs and tens of millions of pounds around Europe. He has also been hit with a proceeds of crime case, had many of his possessions seized, and been ordered to pay over £600,000 or face additional jail time. The death of 39 migrant workers in 2019 was truly horrific. But thankfully, the main players in the human trafficking ring all ended up in jail. And as a bonus, a Europe-wide drug and money trafficking business was also taken out of action. Thank you for joining us today on Crime Chronicles. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the channel with your friends.